So, I saw Farvan's um, video about like what black metal means to me, shortened or something, and um, that kind of inspired me because I'd been thinking about that myself recently. What does black metal mean to me? And um, I've just been sitting here on my carpet for about five to ten minutes waiting for my neighbor to stop using power tools at 5.30 in the evening. So, <laughs> what kind of idiot? <laughs> um, I'm actually just going to quickly change shirt because I'm cooking here. Hold on. Okay, so anyway, I'm back. Looking a lot less black metal now, but um, it's way too hot um, right now. So, this video is going to be me explaining um, black metal um, from my perspective, I guess, and um, what that means to me. So, I think to really start describing black metal, um, I actually have to start away from the music itself. I think music will be the last thing I come to here, um, funnily enough. Um, I would consider myself a pretty happy person. Um, you know, life has its ups and downs for sure, um, but I'd say that I'm generally a happy human being. Um, I guess that, you know, hasn't always been the case, as you might hear in some of my more retrospective lyrics, but I like my life, and I like myself. But what I think I've learned over time is that happiness isn't about getting to a point at which you're like, oh yeah, I like myself now, I like my life, and then just doing anything after that, and just, you know, being an idiot, and just living life like an idiot, like it's... You have to maintain that, you know, once you've found um, that you have become a person that you like, and once you've found that you've started living a lifestyle that you like, you have to keep being somebody that you like, and you have to keep living a lifestyle that you like, you know? So, like, if you decide that your morals are X, Y, and Z, and then you start breaking your own code of ethics because you're scared of other people's judgment, then you start to not like yourself, or if you stop doing things in your life, for example, routinely or whatever, then um, you might start to dislike the way your own lifestyle is oriented. Like, I've noticed lately, um, my sleeping schedule has been kind of out of whack and I've been feeling a bit off. And I'm like, okay, I should probably get back to a sleep schedule that I personally like. And for me, that's getting up around 5, 5.30 in the morning. Not that that needs to be the same for everyone. Um, it's just how I am. Um, but anyway, what I notice is that because life has its ups and downs and you need to maintain your happiness, um, I find that shit builds up to a point at which you're like exploding <laughs> um, and you need to let that out in a healthy um, way. I really want to open a door or these windows because it's so hot but there's a police siren outside or like a, like a car alarm going off. My mom's walking around the house every time somebody steps a foot upstairs boom Boom, boom. <laughs> you can hear it down there. Anyway, um, so you need to find a healthy way. Probably don't have the camera in a very good place. Let me just move this. That's probably a bit better, I hope. Anyway, you need to find a healthy way to let out all of your stresses and all of your kind of sadness and darkness that builds up because, you know, as happy a person as you can be, life is filled with darkness and shit, even sometimes when that darkness is literally the light. I am boiling alive in this room. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, for me, that kind of release I felt, well, I mean, that kind of release is catharsis, you know, um, and I felt that kind of catharsis has best, I've found historically that that kind of catharsis for me has been best found in, um, atmosphere. And by that I don't literally mean the atmosphere above our planet. Um, I mean, you know when you're in the car and you're on a mountain road going through the mountains and there's just forest everywhere but it's real misty and you can see the mountain peaks kind of sticking through the clouds of mist or maybe you can't even see the peaks because they're covered by mist and it's so like airy and kind of grim and that's atmospheric, I feel so good looking at that. I feel like 
I see it and a part of my inside is just like, we're going out. <laughs> um, and it doesn't show, like I don't necessarily start crying, but it's, um, it's a spiritual thing, I think, and I think your spiritual health is very much um, tied to your mental health or, you know, whatever, your emotions and your state of mind and seeing things that are atmospheric or kind of like, you know, that look ambient in nature have always kind of given me that. I just completely lost my train of thought. Um, I've also found that things that are confronting in nature real, really give me that sense of release. Um, so, you know, dead trees, um, when, when grass starts to die because it's like an off season, like winter, I suppose, or when things are really wet, um, and the cold, cold nature and like dark skies. So it's a cloudy day. It's like, it's grim and it's confronting and you might not necessarily notice that you've got things building up in you because you're generally happy but everything that is there kind of hidden it starts to like surface and you feel it and it makes you feel like Ugh! but you feel it as it slips away out of you and it's released um, so I guess things that are jarring and things that are ambient kind of just <laughs> release everything for me. And the same goes for art too. So for example, very dark and kind of depressive um, paintings or sculpture or sketches or whatever, um, like the Baroque art style, for example, I really like. And really um, atmospheric art. So for example, Impressionism, which is a lot happier looking, I really like because it's so ambient. Like, all the kind of dappled, fleeting light, like between everything, and it's just, and it's kind of like not so clear. Everything, it's very, well, it's impressionistic, <laughs> you know. So it's like, um, it's kind of in the way that if you think about black metal's production quality for a lot of it, it's kind of not so clear, and that creates an atmosphere. So then we come to music, <laughs> um, and then we come to music that's confronting music that's harsh, but also music that is able to create an atmosphere and just release shit. Um, so for example, think Love Hate Love by Alice in Chains, think Blackbird by Alter Bridge, not by the Beatles, <laughs> um, and that is... Uh, those make me feel things, you know what I mean? Plenty of songs do. Um, uh, so then we come to Black Metal. Black Metal for me is... I, I guess the most extreme genre of music, oh, of metal, um, maybe excluding like, um, you know, uh, grindcore and, you know, some certain death metal bands, um, and I guess blackened death metal is black metal, um, to some degree, so I'm, I'm including that. Um, Behemoth is my favorite band. <laughs> so you have these harsh, like, you think of the <laughs> blast beats, um, and very abrasive, you know, like tremolo and picking, just like right in your face, these crazy riffs, and it's in your face, and it, the the tone of like the chords and the notes they're playing in black metal is sort of evil, and it's grim, and it's sad, and it's confronting, and you you're faced, and you're like, all right, well, here I stare at my melancholy, you know what I mean? But it's also so atmospheric um, for one reason. For fun, hand the daddy that off. For one reason that it can be quite repetitive, not in a in a kind of modern pop copy and paste way, but in a creating an atmosphere way. Um, another reason is that a lot of the production quality can be quite bad, um, and a lot of it is also because they intentionally create atmospheric music. Um, the you know a lot of like kind of droney things and a lot of um, massive amounts of reverb, um, and it becomes very like. It's like ambient metal, <laughs> um, and for me that it's like you're confronted with all of this darkness and all of this shit, um, but it's this beautiful, beautiful atmosphere, and it's like it's like looking at a at a dying forest in the winter on a rainy, cloudy, grey day, you know, um, and that's what the music is for me. That's the main part. That's the biggest bit of explanation um, that needs to happen. <laughs> Even as a person that generally likes life, um, you know, I'm aware that you need to maintain that <laughs> and 
having that release and having that catharsis of any kind of thing, atmosphere. Like, that's why I love nature so much. That's why I love so many kinds of, like, just uh, visual art so much. Um, that's so important to me. The second thing, which will take less time to explain, is that even though, like I say, you know, I've, I'm here now, I have, I guess, had harsher days in the past, and, you know, that's reflected in, um, a bit of my older lyrics, or even my more recent lyrics that are, like, um, retrospective, or just recent lyrics that are written, were written a long time ago. You know, I've had my harsher days, and I know that at the time, black metal was one of the things that really helped me buy myself time, <laughs> which is what Time in the Traveling Merchant is about, by the way. Um, it's, a, it's a sonic thing. You know, going through what I did, the forest, um, living in Sweden, um, where it was cold and dark and depressive, which was good for me. <laughs> um, things like just spending time with my friends and black metal helped me a lot. So knowing what black metal was for me at the time, it's kind of like not only do I understand how it helps me, or anything atmospheric for that metal, but help for that metal, for that matter. Knowing how black metal affects me now, I also know, like, I have a lot of gratitude toward that genre of music in that I know that it was maybe the driving force in putting me from um, a place where everything was kind of what you see and hear in the music but in my reality and helping me push out time and just wait a little longer to learn and have time to grow and to slowly but surely come to a place where life is like, I'm, I'm liking it. And um, yeah, black metal is very spiritual for me, very emotional and fucking bad badass. So this was just my kind of almost response in a way to Vardavan's video. I'll link that in the description. I think you should totally go and check that out. This video is gonna need a lot of editing because there's so many sounds that I keep being distracted. <laughs> I hope you're having an amazing day or night. Keep it very metal. Um, go listen to some black metal. Uh, how long is this video? It's 15, 16 minutes. Um, but I would have edited it. Let's just say it's like 8 minutes. I've probably got two songs in here. Um, in that case, the two songs that you've heard were Originals by my solo project Fist and those um, songs were I'm Gonna Say I'll Put First I Love You and the second one will be Blee Min um, and if I put a third one in there maybe I put in Time in the no, oh, that's an album uh, Take Us Away Together <laughs> the first track in Time in the Traveling Merchant anyway, have a wonderful time and I hope you enjoyed this and cheers <laughs>